Good morning, folks. Sort of. We are in a cosmic ray health alert. We've got a lot to cover today from space weather to earth weather to top news stories. Let's not waste any time and get right to the sun over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star, and if you can pull your eyes from the massive coronal hole, you'll see a smaller dark filament incoming on the north and approaching that Earth scale graphic. We're watching that for eruptive behavior, and that's partially because the sunspots aren't producing any eruptions of their own. Earth-facing quiet shut down the departing group, and now those umbral fields we saw two days ago have revealed sunspots beneath them incoming. Another test. Solar wind remains utterly calm, still waiting for the coronal hole stream expected soon, and that's better news than normal today because we want to see it arrive. We ended up in a zero-day cosmic ray alert that is ongoing this morning. Four out of six blocks at one might signal the end is near for this watch, and that would be great. Speaking of the coronal hole, its solar wind is going to arrive before the trailing end even gets onto the Earth-facing disk. This is preposterous. The North Pole extension cuts across the equator and extends more than a million miles across the solar surface. It is the longest coronal hole in years and possibly on the entire satellite record. Let's come to our top story. They've spied a star system where every time the closest orbiting planet makes a close approach to the star, known as Periastron, the excitement takes place and we have probably the 20th paper in the last half decade describing how planets can affect their local star activity, whether here or in systems far away. Up next, a horrendously overexposed shot of Jupiter. But that's what it's supposed to be, because you can see background stars and some of Jupiter's moons. This is Osiris-Rex, and it's supposed to catch the glimmer of Earth-Trojan asteroids, so the overexposure is required for the smaller objects. Then we swing to California, the Ventura Fault System just up the coast from L.A. to be exact. UC Riverside says that the fault character is such that it can produce much more damaging earthquakes than previously believed. Up next, it appears the fear of speaking the truth is vanishing. Some notes to keep your eyes on climate discourse battles to come over the next few years. First, this 97% consensus thing. That applies to articles definitively stating a position on climate change in the abstract. Of all the climate papers overall, two-thirds expressed no opinion on global warming or climate change whatsoever in the abstract, and it was also found that self-rating of papers was exceedingly self-serving on the global warming side and quite fair otherwise. In the 2016 survey of members of the American Meteorological Society, the numbers are quite different, with only 29% in that certainty category, with the bulk majority believing it's a mix of natural and man-made climate change, and with a third of respondents saying it's somewhere between 50-50, mostly natural climate change, or no climate change at all. When it comes to weather casters, less than half fall into that it's all our fault category, and 50% believe it's either a mix of human and natural sources, or it's mostly caused by natural sources. Universe is a snitch, opening arguments from the plaintiff are not holding up against discovery. That's your crystal ball. Good luck with what's coming. Anyway, I knew I didn't like what I saw heading for Texas. Flash floods around Houston take second place to the tornado that caused injuries, and damaged a number of structures as it ripped through Rockport. It's cutting across Georgia and up the coast today while snow continues falling in the north, but the bigger story is out west. Folks, they lifted the evacuation order near the Oroville Dam a day before a powerful earth spot approaches the coastline, one that will get stuck there from late tonight through the day Thursday, and as that rain funnels into dams and rivers on Friday, another storm comes ashore to take its place into the weekend and will likely pound L.A. and even San Diego. We are up against the wire here, folks, just a few weeks left until observing the frontier 2017. People are coming from almost every relevant alphabet agency and from 18 countries on five continents. And amidst it all, the first ever presentation of the earthquake forecasting model. Website members, please check out the latest episode of Deeper Look, 18 minutes of energy talk with Billy. Right here, we've got pressure and radar forecasts, a null school global run, and shots of our star to close. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.